Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Three arrested in lottery scamming operation in Hanover. Three people were arrested recently during an anti lottery scam operation in Hanover. In a statement on Saturday, the major organized crime and anti corruption agency MOCA said all three were arrested during a joint operation with the police on July 14. MOCA says Jason Brown and Jovan Brown were being sought for lottery scamming. In addition, Nakita Miller had a bench warrant for absconding bail. Reports are during a search of their premises. Several cell phones, SIM cards, flash drives, and SD cards were seized. All three have been charged with possession of identity information in breach of the Law Reform Fraudulent Transaction Special Provisions Act. Opposition calls for update on SSL fraud probe. The Opposition People's National Party is calling for the government and law enforcement officials to provide an update on the status of the investigations into the massive fraud at Stocks and Securities Limited SSL. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson said while the PNP appreciates that sensitive information cannot be disclosed, it is important that Jamaicans, particularly those with monies invested in the company, are kept in the loop about the progress of the investigations. Given Jamaica's very poor track record of successfully prosecuting those responsible for financial crimes, periodic updates on the status of the investigations are critical to maintain public confidence that there will be no cover-up, Mr. Robinson argued. He also demanded a status update on the forensic audit being conducted by Coal Associates to trace the missing funds. Former Wells advisor at SSL, Jane Panton has also been charged stealing with more than US $10 million from the accounts of the clients of the financial entity. Sprint legend Usain Bolt is among those affected. Panton has been refused bail and remanded until December 6. Glorifying Mandeville robbers a sad situation, says Hotelier. A business leader here is deeply concerned over the apparent glorification of men involved in last Friday's present haste at Scotiabank in this bustling town where five people were shot and injured. Peter Campbell, managing director of Goldview Hotel, said it was not only a sad day for the South Central town, but also a decay in morals. It is a further degradation of our moral standing because you see people almost lord in this kind of behavior, he told reporters. It's almost glorifying this kind of thing, and it doesn't sit well for the country. People on the international scene are looking on and they're now becoming even more reluctant to invest, to visit, and to spend money in Jamaica, and we all know the outcome of that kind of thing, added Campbell. The hotelers comment follow footage of the robbery, which went viral on social media, where some users appear to be applauding the criminals. Teamwork make the dream work, said one user with the TikTok on hand gesture. Me rate the dog shooter in the block. Dog make the whole place a duck, said one user on Instagram. At the same time, there were users who expressed dismay at the responses. Wow, I'm amazed at the amount of people in the comments praising how the rob was executed, said one user on Instagram. Nothing about this no funny, said another. On Saturday, the police said a suspect was apprehended after he was seen driving one of the two vehicles that was used as getaway units. Police said the suspect was driving in a black Toyota Wish motor car which was intercepted about 1.30 a.m. on Saturday in the Four Pass Main Road in Clarendon in the vicinity of Sunset Boulevard. Police said one 9mm magazine, one M16, two AK-47 rounds and a sky mask were reportedly recovered from the vehicle. It is understood that the vehicle, which bore mismatched registration plates, belongs to a man of Portmore in St. Catherine. Reports suggest that a former Bellingham security guard and two bank employees were being questioned in connection with the haste. A woman who identified herself as Alicia told journalists outside the hospital on Friday night that her niece was shot in her leg while waiting in the line at Scotiabank ABM to withdraw cash on her payday. I can't find words to express right now. She was in the line to collect her pay with friends. They said the security guard said clear the way and then they started hearing gunshots said Alice. These gunmen need to get some work. Trust me, they need to do better and stop make people have to go through all of this problem, added the woman. Reporters were told that sometime after 5 p.m., gunmen attacked a Berlin security team at Scotiabank. Footage which has gone viral 
believed to be that of the shootout, shows two men armed with high power weapons making their escape with a bag presumably containing cash. Up to press time on Saturday, it was not ascertained as to how much money was stolen during the haste. The shooting incident resulted in businesses being closed early on Friday as police cornered off the intersection of Caledonia Road and Ward Avenue to the intersection of Caledonia Road and South Race Coast Road. Campbell said the incident has far-reaching effects on the economy. It is a sad day for Mandeville, an unfortunate incident to say the least, but it also highlights the fact that a crime plan or a strategy is absolutely necessary, not just on paper, but to be implemented as soon as possible, he said. In the absence of failure to implement serious crime fighting plans, we will continue to have incidents of this unfortunate nature. The ripple effect, there is definitely a blow to our economy, he added. He said Jamaicans need to take the situation seriously. We have to act swiftly, strategically, and bearing in mind all the far-reaching implications that this and other crimes, blatant act of nature, can and will have on our economy and upcoming generations because people are being terrified, stated Campbell. On the heels of the back to school, we now have to be looking to counter kids because they are terrified of some things of this nature that can happen in broad daylight in such a prominent era, he added. Other business leaders told reporters that they were left outraged and shocked following Friday's attack. President of the Manchester Chamber of Commerce, Simone Spence Johnson, said the shooting incident, which unfolded in a busy section of the town, was frightening. I think it leads more to the overall crime plan that we have in our island, and we really need to have all hands on deck. We really need to look at this seriously, because having five people being caught in the crossfire of a blatant attack such as this is very frightening. You are not sure what can happen any time you are on the road, she said. We are really concerned and we are really outraged. We are crying out to all the different stakeholders and the powers that be that we have to fix this problem. As a chamber, we are totally against this and we really have to work seriously to solve this crime issue in the country, she added. She said the incident threatens to create a ripple effect on commerce. It put a winch in the assembly lines of how we operate as a business and you really don't want something like this happening and us. As citizens and business owners, we pay our staff properly through the banks and encourage them to use online transfer and debit cards at the point of sale as opposed to going to the ATM to withdraw cash, said Spence Johnson. It does affect commerce because if you have people out there who can't access their funds, you are going to have people not being able to buy what they need for their families and it is the height of the back-to-school season right now, she stated. Lyndon Trevor Heavens, chairman of FESCO, said using the hyper weapons during the incident raised alarm. We really wish and hope that those people who were injured by stray bullets will recover quickly and be back to normal. In and of itself, the incident, it was very scary and it make it even worse at this time of the day where it is part of the peak season where there is a lot of activity. Friday evening of all days in the major square of the town, so it underscores the daring mindset of the people who will at all costs seek to undertake these kinds of robberies, so we have to be mindful of that, he stated. Heaven who operates Heaven Fiscal Service Station opposite Scotia Bank said during the incident, his staff rushed to safety. We were able to lock away our staff when the shots started to fire, just in case there were any stray bullets coming across our side of the square. So the safety of our staff was first and foremost in our mind. We closed on the station and drew all the staff inside, he said. In terms of the town itself, it is difficult for law enforcement to be everywhere at all the times and to cover these things. We will do whatever we can to support law enforcement to ensure that we work very closely together and with them added heaven. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.